right, good morning guys. It is Sunday morning and I'm at my aunt's house in Anaheim. Um, I had some things to do yesterday here in the area and I figured that today I would take um, the afternoon trying some of Little Arabia's best Middle Eastern food. So I'm on a hunt. So I've been asking everybody where the best places are, all of the favorite recommendations, and I'm gonna take you guys with me today. So let's get ready and take on the day. Okay, so we made it at Little Arabia. Um, I'm in this little square which has lots of different restaurants from all different countries in the Middle East and North Africa. And we're on a hunt today to try as many as we can. And uh, I think we're studying, we're gonna ease our way into it. My aunt gave me some <laughs> gum, Liben Samaro, some traditional um, Egyptian gum to keep us hungry in between because we're gonna get a lot of food. So we'll see what we can do and I'm gonna show you guys around. As you can see, this whole little center of shops and restaurants has all the different flags of different countries in the Middle East and North Africa. So we're gonna try as many new foods and show you guys some of our favorites as we go. And yeah, let's go. Okay, so we're at Fort Nantara. Say hello. This is Shady. I had to bring a friend because we're going to eat a lot of food and I know I'm not going to be able to eat it by myself, so I brought help. Ooh, what do you personally recommend if you've never tried like Lebanese food? Everything is good here. Those three of us, Okay. Ground beef, tomatoes, and vegetables. Zata. You know the Zata? Yes, of course. Come on. And those little ones, spinach, cheese, with and uh, pomegranate molasses and beef. Pomegranate molasses and beef. The other side. If this tune is good, this place is. That's how you know. Ooh. Is it good? It's great. We literally will pickle everything and anything. Anything that grows out of the ground, we will pickle it. Okay, we're trying this drink. It smells really refreshing. It smells like, it smells like Canada dry, but really strong, like fresh ginger. Whoa, whoa, that's strong. <laughs> okay, so this is the, what is this? The Zatar Manoud, Manoush, Manish. I think this is like one of their famous dishes. I can't even do it. Is it working? Nope. <laughs> I destroyed that thing. Try um, it. It's all my stuff. That's really good. Okay, we're trying the Zafan Magouche. Smells good. I love Zafan, so. And it's like mm. piled with stuff. Look at the bottom. I feel like when you see the underside of bread, it's like telling of how good the bread is. The owner just gave us these. <laughs> just, just fresh pork. baklava on the house. Okay, so this is the free dessert that they gave us. And it has, it's like filo dough, filo dough pastry, and it has ishta. I can't even hold this. Okay, so this is the pastry. All of that right there on the inside. It's, this is heavy, by the way. It's a stuffing made out of basically heavy cream. So it's like a heavy cream filling, and it has pistachios and syrup on the outside. So we're gonna taste it. How is it? So good. Okay, that did not disappoint. It's really good. Wow. That actually exceeded my expectation. So in order to stay um, hungry, <laughs> to keep eating, have some liben <laughs> somara. So <laughs> it's gum and uh, it's made out of tree sap. This is like the OG Arabic gum. How long has it been since you've had one of these? Not like 12, 13 years. Really? That's where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Shobra, From Shobra, from Egypt. Just like you. Right? Literally, like wax. Um, if you want like appetizers, if you want fatouche, which is like basically this Lebanese version of like pizza, um, or pastries, or sweets, baked goods, this is a great spot. And then grab some, some interesting drinks while you're at it. 
Thank you, the desserts were really great. <laughs> House of Mandi, which is a Yemeni restaurant. And as you guys can see, like the seating area is pretty cool. Like I've never been to a restaurant that has seating like this, so this is cool. Um, I'll show you guys the other side. So what did we order? We ordered the lamb fasa. So neither of us have tried Yemeni food before. Um, I've been to a Yemeni wedding and I have some Yemeni friends and I've got a, a look into the culture and some of the clothing and... But with that being said, this is the first time trying Yemeni food. So I'm really excited. Um, so yeah, let's we'll try it. <laughs> and soup. And soup, yeah, so we'll see. Mystery soup. Okay, so they just brought out this complimentary soup and we're gonna try it. The uh, fasa, right? Yeah. It's shredded uh, beef and lamb in like a stew, a thogin or something. And then we have our soup. And then I don't know what this is, but we're gonna find out. And then the bread looks amazing. You see this? Look at that. We're trying the fasa. This bread looks amazing. I was gonna say, there's a lot of steam coming off of that. If you're homesick for some homemade food, it doesn't matter which country you're from, like anywhere in the Middle East, this is definitely good. It hits. Thank you so much. This is Yemeni coffee. I've never had Yemeni coffee before. <laughs> I'm trying to make it messy. Okay, I don't know how strong this is, but look at the color. It's kind of like milk chocolate. Cheers. Okay, well, so if ever you want to like food coma, this is the place. Just you get to relax. Yeah, just have your food, your coffee, your tea, or whatever, and you're just chilling. <laughs> Okay, I'm literally in the bathroom stall at House of Mandi, but I've said this once and I'll say it again. Your Arabic restaurant is authentic only if it has one of these. This is how you know. You go to the bathroom and you look for one of these. If the toilet has a shut off of any kind, okay? If it has one of those, you're in the right place. So we started off our day with Lebanese food. We had fantouche and then we had Yemeni food. We had fasa and some Yemeni coffee. And now we're on our way to have some dessert. We're gonna have some traditional Palestinian knefa at a infamous place called Victory, Victory Suites. So that's our next stop. And then we have two more stops after this. Hopefully we can fit them all in. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to pace ourselves. So I think we've been doing okay so far. We have made it to Victory Suites. Okay, so we were at Victory Suites and that's their infamous knefa. And let's go inside and actually try it. Okay, and they have their display. And this right here, this is what we're here for. It smells amazing. Oh my gosh, the shop is all... Okay, so I'm a little devastated because we literally came here for the knefa. And that's the knefa right there. And it's empty. He's not making more for the rest of the day. Because, I mean, they're gonna close. But it's fine, because there's so many other sweets and we're grabbing some harawa. <laughs> and we're gonna try it. Okay, you guys, this is Ahmad. He's the owner of Victory Sweets. And he's very kind, very warm. Come check him out. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll see you next time. Just like that, it's like we're in Egypt. 
Thank you. Shuk thank you. I almost yes, said shukra. <laughs> I was gonna tell the lady shukra, but it's gracias. It tastes like my childhood. Going to the kushk at the end of the street. I'm getting seven. <laughs> Oh, or coca. is um, it's made out of sesame, and we make it into a dessert. So kind of how like in America we have like peanuts and they make it like peanut butter and we just eat it with everything. This is the Arabic version, but this is special because usually it comes in like a paste. But this, I, don't, I have no idea how this is made, but it's like hair. Can you see this? It's literally like fiber, and you just eat it like this. Like cotton candy, so I'm gonna try it. <laughs> the sensation, because the moment it like hits your tongue, it, it, it melts. So I don't know, but it's really good. It's not too sweet. It tastes a little bit different than the traditional halawa that you would buy like in a in a tub, like like a paste. But it's fun to eat. So, so we have made it to our next destination. We couldn't get knefa at um, Victory Suites. However, there's a knefa cafe right there. So maybe we'll go there for our next stop. But right now we're on Desert Moon Grill. Oh, thank you. Ooh, fancy. Thank you. So they just brought out some fresh bread. Some steam. <laughs> Not really. And I think they brought out this is Boba Ganouk and hummus. So I'm try it. I'm gonna try both. I'm gonna double dip on both sides. Mm -hmm. so this is the Desert Moon Grill plate. We have kofta and chicken and beef kebabs and some rice. And I think it's the garlic sauce. It's very good, tender. It looks delicious. Yeah. Look how beautiful the plate is. I didn't really take a moment to acknowledge that. The kofta. Oh wow. That's really good. It's smoky. Well, cooked perfectly. That is some great kofta. Amazing. Okay, so this is the chicken. And I must say, literally everything's amazing. The lamb, the beef, the kofta, the chicken, cooked, fantastic, seasoned, amazing. We're getting some complimentary coffee to go in these cute little coffee cups. It's, it's actually Arabic thank coffee. Thank you, okay. Arabic coffee, thank you. Ash, Ash. It's, it's, not my, it's, not, it's not my real name, it's just a... Uh, it's easier to say. What's your real name? It's Hashim. 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 Where are you from, Hashim? Lebanon. Lebanon. That's cool. It's nice to meet you. That's We're cool. Joy from Egypt. I'm Shadi. Shukran, thank you guys so much. The food is great. So one thing that I noticed at going at all of these restaurants that we've been to today, from the Lebanese one to the Yemeni restaurant that we were at, and now leaving Desert Moon Grill, which is just like a general like Middle Eastern place, um, I don't know with the owners what country they're from, but everybody gives you something for free like everything There was like free soup at the Yemeni restaurant like complimentary. They give us free coffee as we left um, At the at Fornan Haro they gave us uh, free dessert for first-time guests So like they're very generous and it shows in the way that they do business So I just thought that was really sweet. So we've made it to Cairo cafe and it looks lit this is kind of one of the like traditional or the main spots for Egyptian food in Anaheim. The tablecloth is very Egyptian. This is the Egyptian lotus flower. So Cairo Cafe is actually what inspired this uh, video. And it seemed like a lot of people were interested to know where you can get authentic food in LA or in California. And some of my friends even thought I was in Egypt. So I figured I would make a tour of all the different authentic places where you can get uh, Great Middle Eastern food, owned by Middle Eastern people. So this is, was a popular hit. So we're back again and we're gonna have some dessert. So we were just on the topic of DNA tests because we were talking about Egyptians and how um, I am and Shedi as well. We're both Coptics. So Coptics are an ethno-religious minority in Egypt. So 
uh, it also shows in our DNA we're very much largely Egyptian and our, 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 our bloodline typically didn't have, like intermarry much throughout history. Um, and so Shady said that he did his DNA test so... Okay, I was wanting to ask another Coptic person their DNA test results and so you did yours. Can I, can I hold the screen? Okay, so here we are. <laughs> we have, um, can you see? We have 100% Arab Egyptian and Levantine, 94.1% Coptic Egyptian from seven different regions. Wow, that's specific. 5.9% just Egyptian. So it's interesting how Coptic Egyptian and Egyptian are different DNA uh, like categories. Okay, so looking at this, this is like from the 23andMe website on the um, DNA test. And here it says that Shadi's DNA was 94.1% Coptic Egyptian. So it tells you that as Coptics, we, it's 10% of Egypt's population. They're a Christian minority who share an ancient history with non-Coptic Egyptians that dates back since before the first pharaohs. So it says that um, after the 7th century conquest of the Russian... Wait, not Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Russian. Rashidun? Caliphate? Okay, the Christian Copts began to become genetically distinct from the Muslim majority population while the Coptic language was replaced by Egyptian Arabic outside of a strictly religious setting. So the language of Egypt was Coptic before it was now the modern day Egyptian Arabic. Um, and it was the ancient, it was basically a fusion of the ancient Egyptian language written in Greek-like text. So if you look at Coptic, it, it looks very much like Greek. There's more alphabet, more letters in the alphabet. Um, and it's a little bit different, but very, very similar. Um, and so, yeah, it says today most Copts live in Egypt or Sudan, but there is also a large Coptic communities living in the United States, um, many in California, uh, Southern California specifically, Orange County specifically, <laughs> Anaheim more specifically. <laughs> Right where we are right now in this Egyptian restaurant um, and living in Australia and Canada. So little fun fact on the Coptic background. So I need to do one of these and I'm very interested to know my results. Okay, so this is making me want to do the test even more, but apparently other people who have done the DNA test registered on the app. It tells you people who might be your cousins. So these are like potential cousins that I you might have. If you click on them, it should show you like your family tree or like predicted. Oh my tree. gosh! It tells you where they live. <laughs> yeah. ah, that's insane. <laughs> okay, I need to do this as soon as possible. That is so cool. It tells you like where you guys like linked, I guess, or how you're linked in the family tree. Wow! Wow! That's so cool. Okay, I'm doing mine ASAP. This guy was born in 1971. Lives in New York. Should message him. Oh my god! I already I clicked connect. <laughs> That's so, okay. okay, we have our shea with nana -na and mint. Some good old black tea with mint to go perfectly with um ali. So last time I had this dessert here, it's the best um ali I've ever had. And that's saying something. And I typically don't like um ali. So what um ali is, is it's a bread pudding with coconut and pistachios and usually like mixed nuts. But the bread pudding, in my opinion, is typically like too soggy. And I don't like it, even if it tastes good. But this texture, they nailed everything. And it's the best of that. And we're going to taste it. So let's do that. Okay. Try to get both of it. Both of them? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Hot. It's hot. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to not do it. Try not to burn myself. Yeah, maybe blow on it a couple times. A lot of times. It smells so good. It smells like perfection. And I wish, I wish the lighting isn't the best. I'm just gonna go for the taste for now. <laughs> Didn't work, did it? It's not too sweet. It's just the right amount of sweetness where you can just enjoy the overall like taste of everything. The taste of coconut and the pistachio. 
and the bread is the perfect texture. It's not too soggy. It's like fluffy, but moist. Literally the best find I've ever had. That's all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's the end of our food tour around Little Arabia. We're finishing off with some shea with Nana. Nya. If you're in the area, be sure to check them out. Um, the owners are fantastic. Everybody is so kind and warm, and you really feel like you go to different places when you're in each of these different uh, like restaurants. They are very proud of their culture, and it's like an act of representation as much as it is about offering great food and hospitality. So. Yeah, I definitely recommend these experiences and I think that's all for today. So, peace out from Anaheim and I'll see you guys on the next video.